Hi folks, we are at the big Kaiser event when we're up here for the DMG event. And one of the things I've really become fascinated with is tool presetters. So what are they, what do they do, and what can they do to help you make better parts? This is actually pretty cool. So we are here with Patrick Craddy. Thanks for having us, Patrick. Very Walk much. us through, this is a Speroni. This is a Speroni tool presetter. Okay. This model specifically is the Magus. Uh, right now we're working on a Magus 500, so that okay. means we're at a 500 millimeter okay. column height. So a little over 20 inches or 20 so? Yeah, roughly, right, okay. right around 20 inches yep. there. And we can do a 400 millimeter column, a 500 and a 600. Okay. And this is our bench top presetter, as you yep. probably can tell. Uh, so basic idea behind a presetter is measure the tools offline yep. while the machine center is making chips. Right. So we can definitely spin this in a you know production value uh, kind of way. Yep. So we've got our handle here. We've got a camera on one side, light source on the other. Yep. I can move this into the this is visual cool. field and right off the bat we are picking up our height here. You, do, you don't even have to it's just active. You don't have to hit anything. It's active. Yes. Right. So that's what's cool. So when I first saw this, um, and I've known about these, you just think gauge length. Okay, so instead of having to buy a Renishaw OTS or another tool presetter for every machine, you can do this offline, which is which is great, and I wouldn't discount that. But what's intriguing to me is taking it the next step further. So the two things that come to mind are one, looking at runout, and then number two, checking the condition and quality of the tool that you're using. Absolutely, runout is a, is a huge factor in saving you uh, on consumables and yep. managing tool life. Yeah. Um, we really want to catch any problem we might have with the tool uh, before it goes out to the machine yeah. center. So I have an automatic runout feature here. So I'll just turn that on and all I simply have to do is rotate the tool and okay. as it passes through the screen it's going to automatically graph um, my tool runout. Okay, so, so it's going to show our difference. That's showing, okay, so min max diameter with the delta being six, so that's six ten thousandths of an inch? Six ten thousandths of an inch. Okay. Right now we're running a used drill, so. Okay, no, no, that's fine, I'm just curious. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we, we definitely want to know what that's running and if it's time to change it out. If yeah. I were about to run this, uh, I'd probably change that drill out. <laughs> yeah, no, so th this is a really big deal. Uh, anything under, arguably under half inch or quarter inch on any solid carbide, but when you start getting into the stuff smaller than one eighth of an inch, tool run out is absolutely imperative when it comes to good service finishes, tool life, cut quality, uh, all that stuff. And so we spend a fair amount of time taking a indicator in the machine uh, when it's in our spindle and testing that. So this would solve that. Um, but also it's just going to give you a better way of getting that data quickly, which means you're going to be more likely to do it. Same thing on our Haas. We, we have actually the big Kaiser digital boring head, which we love, but we actually spend a fair amount of time using the OTS to check that value and then update it. So this, I assume you could just put a boring head in there, vernier or digital, and Absolutely. just actively check it. So you mean, it's cool. You literally just grab any tool. It's got to match the taper. So it looks like that's a that's a 50 taper right now. Yep. So we got these guys for right yeah, here. Perfect. I'm going to grab a tool real quick, if you don't mind. Yep, by all means. That's a funny guy. So just, it's as simple as, Lining it oh, up. Other way around. Was that right? Yeah, yeah. You have to go with the flat. Sorry. The tool is in there and you push the buttons to give you some motion. There we go. Opposite side, actually. Other side. Yeah. It's a reverse image on all, it's basically all two presetters. It's a reverse image. So I need to be there. Yeah. So that, is that correct? And then if you were to clamp that down, rotate this in the view. So maybe we need to come up just a hair and it's inverted. Go down a little bit. You should be able to get the max height and max diameter simultaneously. So that's my gauge length. Gauge right length now. and diameter. And diameter of that tool. Yep. Awesome. And of course, we could check the corner rad. Turn that on and I can move this little box oh, that's into place. Awesome. And drag that automatically. Around. So that tells me you got a 9th out rad. Exactly. So this is really cool when you've got, you know, like lathe tooling or boring heads or bull nose end mills where if you're not sure what the rad is or you want to check it, um, you can very quickly get this. And I guess, would it be reasonable to use this as a workflow for updating to the degree of tenths what a rad actually is and then putting that back into your cam system? You absolutely could. Okay. Uh, in fact, we do a number of uh, cam integrations such as Master Cam, Spree, 
think we just got into Power Mill, yep. uh, and so we can, you know, transfer that data back into that CAM system and update it, and vice versa. We can actually pull that data from your CAM library and throw it into our data system as well. So Why that would you way. go that way? Well, otherwise, if you wanted to make a, a nice tool setup list, uh -huh. there's no reason to have to do that data entry twice. Okay, so the idea is it would tell you, I want you to put in the quarter inch tool next, it's tool 31, you would do it and then it would automatically update the diameter and gauge length and it would match those data sets actively. Yes. The databases can be somehow linked. Yes, especially. Can you use this to do any um, creation or analysis of the tool holder for like shaft length or call it not? Well, uh, yes. Um, so for example, if you want to measure Let's say you want to make a 3D uh, solid yeah. of that holder. Yeah. We can do that. Now, we're always going to recommend you do that with a fully automatic presetter because okay, doing, that, doing that uh, manually is, is, is going to be a bit painstaking. Okay. Um, but you know, we have a fully automatic yeah, uh, a Futura over here, miles. and it's moving all on its own. Okay. And so you can tell it start at the bottom of the V-groove, even finish at the top of the tool, and it'll render um, mm -hmm. Solid that you could then send to like an anti-collision mm -hmm. uh, software, and they can run that simulation, or even send it to Mastercam for like your five-axis yeah. surfacing and blending simulations. When it looks at runout, is it measuring runout at the widest? It's measuring runout at where you're looking at the tool. In other words, could you look at runout on two different uh, two yes. different lengths of an end mill to see where is the runout increasing as you increase the Absolutely, okay. and, and there's multiple ways to do that. We have our automatic runout function in there like we saw earlier, mm -hmm. um, but we could even just do it manually if we so, so choose. We've got a number of these macros, so I could, for example, just put a point in the screen and I could then you move. check it there. I could move that That's camera cool. to wherever we want and we can then check that runout at whatever at position point. we feel like, or we could use this macro and go into the automatic runout function and we can check it that way as well. So this is something that we've started to become a lot more conscious of is tool life. Uh, I want to invest in better holders and better cutting tools, but if you're gonna do that, you gotta kinda, you can't just do one of those things. You gotta look at the whole picture is my opinion as I'm learning, and run out is such a big deal. Even with a relatively beefy tool, uh, like a half inch end mill, I was actually Googling on this and funny enough found a study. We'll put a link in the description to uh, a guy here at Big Kaiser who published some data, I believe. I'm doing this from memory, but something like every 10,000th of an inch runout has the potential to decrease tool life by up to 10%. So looking at really good work holding that minimizes runout, and I guess this isn't gonna solve that, but it's at least gonna let you check it. It's gonna identify that problem. And, yeah. that, and that's, and I've done a, a bajillion installs where I get there and we start checking the runout of their tooling, and all of a sudden you have to have the conversation, you know, I think it's time to maybe change out that collet set because yeah. you can see in the screen, you know, that tool wobbling back and forth. Here, mm -hmm. if I push and pull, we want it to, to go back to where it came from. Yeah. You know, whereas uh, if you have those used tools, they're gonna slop all over the place and just imagine what that's doing in the yeah. machine center. Sure. So, sorry, I think we got sidetracked. You were yeah. gonna show a yeah. boring tool? So let's or? do a boring tool. So I'm gonna use um, a 50 to 40 adapter. So in the okay. case of the Magis, we're going to use an integral spindle of a certain size. Uh, and typically we like to go 50 taper because we have the most adapter options. So right now it's a 50 to 40. Okay. Clamping is in here, so we actually have a set of fingers, same okay. set of type of finger set that we have so in the So you have integral. to buy this to match your drawbar or pull stud style? No, it's universal. Interesting. Okay. Yes, it's universal. So. Basically, if you can buy that pull stud in the, in the US or in Europe, it's, okay. it's going to work. So what I do is I'm going to load the adapter in. Then I'm going to grab my boring bar. Yep. So this has been I a- grab them without an insert. <laughs> this has been a big deal for us uh, because we have noticed um, on the vernier boring heads, you'll get backlash as you adjust in and out. And then when you tighten it down, uh, our digital boring head takes that into account, which is phenomenal, but it's not going to happen on a vernier, so you've got the issue of backlash each way, but then also, I want to know what the diameter is after it's locked down, which I'm sure this handles, right? Um, yeah, absolutely. So what we do is we would set to a bore diameter, then we would take that tool out and put it in like a tool vise so we can do torking, because oh, we never want to do torquing on here. Okay. Think of this as a CMM 
you don't want to put too much force into it. Even a couple foot-pounds on a little screw? If it's a small screw, but if you, if you have to use a torque wrench, then you don't want to do it. Yeah, but I'm but if it's adjustable, by all means, adjust away. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Got yeah that, that's no problem. Okay. We just don't want to do any kind of torquing. If it's measured in foot-pounds, no, not in here. Yeah. Understood. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I've got my boring bar here. Yep. I've got my adapter loaded into place. I'm going to load in the tool, engage the clamping, and you can see that that is nice and rigid. Yep. And then I'm going to take my camera. Okay, so you're pushing down both buttons. You can move it both both the same buttons, time. so I can move both yeah. axes simultaneously. I, can, I love how it just automatically picks that up right right off the bat. And if it doesn't find it right right away, we can move that box around. Yeah, we can even resize it is depending it, on different geometry features. Is it temperamental to shop lighting conditions? I, I have not seen that because we're in the infrared spectrum. Ah, okay. That that re, I mean, the fluorescent lights don't has any impact at all. We've even had it in sunny rooms and it makes and no difference. And do these difference. need to be in a tool room or a controlled environment? Absolutely or? not. Because okay. of the cast iron construction and homogeneous materials, we actually only have a three micron thermal coefficient along the length of travel of the x-axis. Okay. So as the temperature heats up and cools down, everything's moving in conjunction with one another. Okay. So now that I've got this in my field of view, I am going to establish my focal point by rotating the tool back and forth. That's awesome. And once I figure that out, I have a spindle brake option here. Okay. So I engage that. That way I can't accidentally uh, move this out, misalign this. Okay. So if I were to be adjusting the bore diameter, ah, okay. if I rotated the spindle, that would change the diameter readout, and I don't want to do that. So then from here, my so here, adjust the screw. I can start dialing that in to wherever I want to go. And now that has a, that boring head has a lock on it, correct? Correct. And that's something we, you, we can or cannot lock in this. We would not want to lock it in here. Really? So what we can do is because of the spindle brake and because we use these drive keys, all we have to do, unlock, excuse me, unlock the clamping system pull the tool out, yeah, we could then load it into a tool vise at the proper size, Okay. lock that down, and then put this right back where it was, reclamping it, it, and then we can see how far did that it's move. Moved. Okay. So that way you're not searching for that focal point again, you just put it back in. So we always recommend having a, a tool vise nearby, Right. and that way pull it out, put clamp it, put it back in, and, and that's true if you're going to you know, uh, tighten down the nuts on, on, a, on a colleted tool holder, for example. Oh, that I get. Yeah. Sure, sure, sure. But we definitely have people that do it, but we'll, we'll never recommend it. <laughs> Last thing, folks, we have fallen in love with having shop microscopes, either the little cheap loops or a proper actual microscope. But last thing that's pretty cool on this is show them the, watch how this changes from a black image immediately to a proper image of the cutting tool. And you're now able to do, you said it's 45X? Right zoom. now it's our standard 45X magnification. So you're able to very, very quickly see, you know, for us the concern is if you accidentally rotated an insert to a prior previously used cutting edge and you're able to jog around and see that beautifully. Last question is, talk to me about accuracy on how accurate it's able to measure tool round, you know, especially on where I'm gonna use this, which would be for really small finishing tools, shorter gauge length, what kind of accuracy does this have? So accuracy of the magis, so the res resolution is one micron. Okay. Repeatability is two microns. Okay. And TIR at top of travel. At is top of travel. Okay. Top of travel is seven microns guaranteed. Yep. We oftentimes get better, but guaranteed seven microns. Awesome. So that's about three tenths. Awesome. Yeah. Patrick, thank you very much. Appreciate it. You're very welcome. Thank you.